Last Sunday, I released a pastoral letter which was read in all masses to the whole diocese of Tandag on the occasion of the Good Shepherd Sunday. In that pastoral letter, I highlighted one very important quality of a good shepherd. A good shepherd takes good care of his flock. And his flock does not only compose of people. His flock also includes the environment, which is a blessing from God to his people. The environment that sustains human life and all lives present in the world. Today, in our gospel reading, we heard Jesus using nature to teach us about some important truths in life. Jesus sees nature in a different way. For Jesus, Creation is filled with the grandeur of God. Creation has a sacramental character or principle, meaning when we look at nature, we do not immediately see money or profit. We only see nature as money and profit if the eyes that we use are the eyes of economics and consumerism. But Jesus, in looking at nature, he looks at creation from a contemplative eye of a mystic. Jesus sees in nature the presence of the divine. Jesus is one, is maybe considered as the best teachers the world has ever produced. And his way of teaching is very effective because it is visual and evocative. When he teaches something, the audience can see it. And because they can see it and touch it and smell it, they can easily understand it. Jesus teaches using parables. The parable of the sower, the parable of the weeds among the wheat, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the fishing net, the drag net, the parable of the fig tree, and many others. When Jesus sees a seed, he sees the kingdom. When he looks at the wheat among the weeds, he sees the kingdom. When he sees a fishing net, he sees the kingdom. 
He does not see money or profit. He looks at nature with a contemplative eye. And this is the kind of eyes that we need. We need the eyes of faith to appreciate the beauty and the value of nature without possessing it, without the desire to destroy it, but to protect it from destruction and allow it to flourish. Now let us try to turn to the image that Jesus used in our gospel reading today. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You can only bear fruit if you remain united with me. Fruitfulness in life depends on our communion and attachment to Jesus. The things we possess in life will destroy us if we are not connected to Jesus. The gifts that are given to us as blessings from God will destroy us if we are not constantly attached to the giver. The gifts will only benefit the community if the gifts are being used for the building up of the community of God. Power, for instance, is a gift. It is a precious gift because through power one is able to maximize service. When one is in power, he can make important decisions that can immediately affect change. He can approve budgets that will promote the common good. But if power is detached from the mind, of the giver who is God. Power does not just destroy or corrupt the person, but it destroys the whole community. Money. Money is a good servant but not a good master. When money is considered as our servant, we can make use of money to help the poor in their difficulties and crises. We can finish this cathedral to be a beautiful place of encounter between God and His people. But if money will become our master, it will distort all our values. If money will become our master, that will be the beginning of the erosion of our mountains 
and destruction of our environment. The destruction of our, of our mountains is caused by the destruction of our values. If we want to restore the beauty and the dignity of our environment, of our nature, of the whole of creation, we have to restore the right perspective and the corrupted values that we have as a community of God. Popularity. Popularity is good because popularity will influence people. Many of us have many idols in life. Artists, actors, but many times we idolize them because of secular values. How I wish we will find people who can be our inspiration to promote good values in life. When an athlete who is very popular makes the sign of the cross or praise before the event. He becomes or she becomes an evangelizer because once a person is popular, the eyes of the world are fixed on him or her. But if popularity is detached from evangelization and mission, it will get into the head of the person and the person will begin to believe that he or she can be the author of his or her deepest fulfillment in life. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You can only be fruitful if you continually attach yourself to me. That is why in life, no matter how popular we are, no matter how powerful we are, no matter how we live in abundance with the material things that we possess, Inside us, we still feel that insatiable thirst. Kanang kahaw ang ngadili matambalan. That at the middle of the night, even if we are surrounded with blessings in life, we still feel empty. And the more we fill up with things in this world, the more we become empty, the more we have, the more empty we become. And St. Augustine is really right in saying, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Let us try to work for something that will not perish. Let us work for something that will last.
and the joy that will last. The fruits that will not wither. The fruits that will benefit the community is the fruit that comes from our deep communion with God. May God bless us now and forever.